Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk you through a guide to one of my favourite activities, which is Winter Tote. If you haven't already, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell just to make sure that you see all of my latest videos. I'd love if you could give this video a like and also a comment to show your support. So Winter Tote is a skilling boss which is awesome for getting super quick fire making experience and it's a super chilled mini game. It also gives great rewards based off of your herb lore, farming, woodcutting and mining levels, making it a great money maker and a great way for iron men to collect items. Some examples of common rewards include seeds, herbs, fish, coins, ores, logs and gems. Rarer and more exciting rewards include the dragon axe and the tome of fire. You can also get what I think is one of the most amazing pets in the game. So it's called the mythical phoenix which comes in an array of gorgeous colors. I'm hoping that I get one soon. So the requirements for starting Winter Tolt are membership and level 50 fire making, and you will need to have previously visited Great Corend. You can visit Great Corend by going to Port Sarim and speaking to Vaos to take the boat to Great Corend, and that will unlock the Winter Tolt area for your very first visit. The easiest way to get to Winter Tolt is with the games necklace, which you can purchase on the Grand Exchange. It's easiest if you play on a Winter Tolt world, as each round will go quickly as there are many people working together. You will need to wear four pieces of warm clothing to ensure you do not get hurt by additional damage from the cold. Examples of warm clothing include the Santa outfit, bunny outfit, clue hunter outfit, hunter gear, so I'll link my guide on how to make this below, the pyromancer outfit, fire tiara, various scarves, plus even more. So the items that you will need are a knife, a hammer, a tinder box, and an axe, the very best one that you can use, as well as some food. For lower levels, I recommend cakes, and for mid levels, I recommend jugs of wine, as they're really, really cheap to buy. So during the minigame, the pyromancer may require healing. Only one person needs to actually heal him, and you're unlikely to need to if you are in the Winter Tolt world because someone else will probably do it for you, but it does grant additional points. If the pyromancer requires healing, a red hat symbol will appear in the top left area. So I'll show you exactly how to make a rejuvenation potion, which is how you heal the pyromancer. So to heal the pyromancer, use a rejuvenation potion on him. To make a potion, you need to take an unfinished rejuvenation potion from the crates in the starting room. Then you need to go pick a bruma herb from the sprouting roots and then you can use it on the unfinished potion. So sometimes the brazier becomes cracked and broken, so just use your hammer on it to quickly gain some easy construction experience. So when it does crack it can damage you, so just be very careful of this as well. So the damage you get from the minigame as a whole is scale dependent on your current hit point level. So it's a little bit easier if you do the game when you are a lower level. So this is exactly how you start the game. So at the start of the round, it's always really important that you light the brazier as soon as you can, because this will provide you with extra experience and points. You need to cut bruma roots, and the very best place to cut these is right where I'm standing now. So this is just adjacent to the wall. It's a safe spot so that you can't get injured from the snowfall attack. So yes, yeah, standing here means the snowfall attack won't damage you because there's not enough room for it to fall. Just make sure you keep an eye on your health and also keep drinking those wines or eating those cakes when it gets a little bit low. 
I like to actually wait until it gets to about halfway and then have a few of the wines. So you need to keep the fire burning by adding logs and fletched roots to the fire. So it's a really good idea to fletch the logs into kindling in the same place that you chop them because this way you won't get hit by the snowfall attack. So there are a few different methods that people tend to use when they play Winter Tilt. So one is where you try to maximize your experience gained. The other is where you try to maximize the points that you get so that you get more supply crates. And then the other option is just sort of a combination method. So what I'm going to talk you through is actually more of a combination method because I think this is more appropriate to beginners. It's what I personally use and it's just really quick and easy. So basically to get a reward box you need to gain 500 points in the game. So when I play I like to play for a combination of rewards and experience. So for my first inventory full I'll cut a full inventory of logs and then fletch that inventory. And then for the remaining inventories I will just feed the brazier logs. But if you want to get the maximum points to get multiple boxes and multiple chances at the Phoenix pet, you'd want to actually fletch all. There's actually a more advanced approach that you can take to get even more points, and that's one where you actually solo the Winter Talk game, so you wouldn't do it on a Winter Talk world, you would just do it by yourself. And if you'd like a guide on that and maximizing points, then just drop me a comment and like let me know what you think. So I hope that you've enjoyed learning about the Winter Tolt minigame. If you have any questions at all, please just drop me a comment. I'll leave you with some footage of me completing a round of Winter Tolt. Let me know if you get any cool prizes and all the best at getting to level 99. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Bye!